What's up guys and welcome back to the bait making station. Today we are doing a mad scientist style experiment here at the bait making station. I've been wanting to do this for a while but I've just not had the pieces that I need to actually do it and I now have the most important piece to doing this experiment today and that is some gulp alive liquid and for any of you guys that have ever used any of the Berkeley gulp alive products you will know it comes in this jar of liquid and that liquid is what holds all the Berkeley gulp alive scent and well today what we're going to do is we're going to use some do it molds we're going to make some baits and we're going to place them in this liquid for an entire week and we're going to see what happens to these baits and I'm very excited because if this works how I think this is going to work this is going to be a great use of that Berkeley gulp liquid once you've used all the baits out of it and it turns it into a multi-purpose kind of deal where we can make some baits that are probably going to be really really effective so without further ado we're going to make a new shape that we've never made on the channel before we're going to experiment with the berkeley gulp alive liquid and we're going to have some fun today and hopefully you guys will enjoy this video all right guys so we've got a cup of raw plastisol here and we're going to add a couple additives to it before we actually start the cooking process the first one is going to be some plastisol softener this is a medium formula so i like to put about four drops of that plastisol softener in there just to help soften up that formula just a little bit and kind of helps me to customize my plastic formula exactly how I like it. So I can get a lot of fish out of one bait without having to put on a new one. And then the next thing we're gonna put in there is just a little bit of plastic sauce stabilizer. And what this is going to help us do is it's just gonna stabilize this plastic formula that as we're cooking it, we don't burn it as easily. And I would highly suggest that if you're new to bait making and you have never made baits before, the first thing that you need to do is take your time. But the second thing is add a little bit of that stabilizer because if you're new, it is gonna help to keep it from burning and it's gonna just kind of help the overall experience of making baits go just a little bit smoother. So we're gonna start cooking this plastic up and we're gonna get it good and cooked up and then we're gonna add our colorants. All right, guys, we are getting that plastic cooked up. As you can see, it's kind of got that yellowy, milky kind of color to it. That means that plastic is getting up to temperature. And we just have to keep on cooking it probably about two more minutes and that stuff will be at temperature and we'll be able to add some color to it and we'll be able to start making our baits. Now the bait again today that we are making is the Do It Molds Wave Worm. This is a 3.8 inch worm style mold. It's great for drop shots. It's great for net rigs. Like I said earlier, it's also got this cavity over here on the side that allows you to pour a tail one color and then add that tail into the mold. And so you can have a body that's one color and a tail that's another color, which is a cool customizable feature to this particular mold. This is also a non cavity mold. So you're able to make a lot of baits very, very quickly, which I like a lot because it allows me to come out here and very quickly make 20, 30, 40 baits at a time, not use that much plastic and be able to make a bunch of baits I can have ready to go, especially with something like a Ned rig or a drop shot where you can go through a lot of them very, very quickly. We got about five more seconds on this. Let's actually take a look at it and see where we're at and we are almost there. Now the one thing I'm very interested in today is how this plastic is actually going to react to being put into this Gulp Alive formula because the Gulp Alive baits and the plastic that they use on those baits is a special formula that makes it where it absorbs that scent but it doesn't really absorb the liquid making them swell because the thing about plastics is over time as they sit in certain types of liquids especially water they will swell and swell and swell so maybe you've hooked an old bait you know an old brush hog or an old worm and brought it out of the water and it's like six inches long and it's like that big around well that's because that water actually absorbed into that plastic and so what's going to be interesting to see is if these baits do the same thing in this gulp a lot formula now sneaky sneaky little thing that some people are doing including me and some pros that i know about and other people who love fishing and love catching fish is they're putting all kinds of plastics into the gulp alive formula 
and they're actually making them swell. And there was actually a Japanese guy that won a tournament a few years ago that was putting some JDM style plastics in some aminos and in some different liquids to make them swell up and get just a little bit bigger. And so I think if this bait swells that we're making today in this liquid that it could be okay. I'm just gonna be very interested to see if it absorbs this liquid up and turns it into a different bait, but only time will tell on that. So right now, We've got our plastic up to temp. And like I said, we're gonna be making a little bit of a shad pattern today. And I think what I wanna do here, I've been thinking about it, I think I wanna do a little bit of blue flake. I think I wanna do a little bit of this gun metal flake in there and get a little bit of shad and maybe a little bit of purple flake and then just a tad of white colorant just to give it a little bit of a kind of almost milky base. And so we're gonna go really light on the white color. Let's do one, two, three, four, five drops on that. And let's go ahead and mix that up and see how it looks. Cause I don't want this to be very dark at all. I don't want it to be a white based bait. I want it to be more kind of a, I don't know, like a almost bony kind of milky looking color because that actually is perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. I just love that kind of bone milk looking color that baits get. I love matte colors. You know, it's one of the reasons I love the Berkeley Max scent baits so much is because they do have those matte colors. And I do believe that sometimes that helps to get a few more extra bites. So we're gonna do one fourth teaspoon of blue, one fourth teaspoon of gunmetal, and then a fourth of a teaspoon of purple hollow flake. And we're gonna see how that looks. And that honestly gets all the colors that I love to see into my shad imitators because we have a lot of gizzards, we have a lot of threadfin, and both gizzards and threadfin shad have purple and blue in them. And so I always love to add a little bit of purple and blue in there to just give it that kind of customized look that I like to see. And honestly, Man, that is dang near it right there. I actually love the way that looks a whole, whole lot. Make sure we get all that flake incorporated in there. We're gonna go ahead and stir this really well. We'll stick it back in the microwave for a few minutes just to get it good and liquefied again. But that's about dang near what I'm looking for. That's actually a really good looking color. So let's stick this back in the microwave for about 30 seconds. We'll get our mold put together and we'll keep this train rolling. So let's get our mold together, get our heat gloves on, and let's do our first pour of the day. All right, guys, so let's get these wave worms poured up. We got our mold sitting here. We're gonna go ahead and get our plastic into our injector here. We're gonna pour these things up and see how they turn out. I'm very excited about this pour just because this color is kind of cool. I'm also excited to experiment with this Gulf Alive plastic and see how that turns out, <laughs> which it's either going to be a really good success or it's going to totally suck. I'm not really sure which one, but we will definitely find out here before too long. So Let's get all nine cavities of this thing poured up. It takes about a whole injector to do this entire thing. Like I said, it is nine baits. So you can pour up a lot of baits very, very quickly if you go ahead and fill this entire thing up. And that is definitely what we're going to do today. I think we ran out of plastic on that very last one. Yep, so that injector did eight total baits with a little bit of excess on top of each. So that's still awesome. I mean eight baits that quickly would that take us about 30 seconds to do that and so i mean awesome awesome stuff there just being able to do that many baits that fast so we're gonna let these things cool we're gonna see how they turned out and honestly i think about eight baits is all that we're gonna be able to actually put in this jar of liquid that gives us enough room for everything to expand if it does expand um and it makes sure that we got enough baits to fish with if we get on a good bite because this thing is uh, 6.8 ounces of liquid and i actually don't know how many is actually in the jar 
can't seem to find that on there. So I don't know how many was originally in here. If I, if I remember correctly, there's like 10 of them, um, and they're three inch minnows or smelts, and this is a 3.8 inch. And so I would say probably 10 or 11 in this jar is about all that we're gonna fit. And then the experiment begins. And this experiment is gonna take some time to complete simply for the fact that we're gonna let these things sit for an entire week and come back to them. Um, but I think in the long run, it's gonna be worth it to see what happens. Now, like I said, I've experimented with some Max scent and some gold, um, something I've not shared on the channel yet, but it's something I've definitely experimented with and it does pretty well. I've also experimented with, experimented with just straight power bait and that gulp liquid, and it also works out pretty well. There's a little bit of swelling with the normal power bait. The Max scent, not so much. As, if anything with the Max scent, it almost just kind of like makes it a little bit mushier. And so it's very interesting. It's something that I've been playing with and experimenting with. I think the scent technology is the next level of technology in the bass fishing world that's gonna help us to catch more fish. And so making my own baits and then putting them in that liquid for me is really, really cool because I think it's just a really weird, interesting experiment to do. So these things should be cooling off here in just a minute enough for us to get them out and we'll take a look at this awesome color that we've poured up here. All right guys, so let's crack the mold open and let's see what kind of juiciness that we have made here. We're gonna take our time here and we're gonna open this thing up. And yeah, that is exactly what I was looking for. Kind of an opaque, almost matte finish on that bait. And that is awesome. You can see that purple and blue and gunmetal flake in there. It's got that little bit of an opaque, almost gray, white color to it. I think that is gonna do a really good job of mimicking some shad. So I am very happy with how those turned out. Now the real question is going to be, do you think the liquid is going to turn it a different color? And that might be a factor that I've not even considered yet because when you look at this liquid, this liquid has a yellow tint to it. And so the question is, will that yellow tint bleed over into the plastics or will we not notice it? But only time will tell on that when we actually let them steep in that liquid for an entire week. And so, yeah, we're gonna get all these poured, pulled here. And as you guys can see, that is perfect. That is exactly what I was looking for, kind of an opaque, almost grayish blue shad pattern. And we were able to pour up eight wave worms very, very quickly. And now the experiment begins. All right, guys, so here's our gulp liquid. Here is our wave worms. We're gonna go ahead and open this stuff up and we are going to stick these bad boys in here and just let them sit. I mean, that's all we can do. That's, that is the experiment, is letting these things sit in this Gulp Alive liquid and see what it does to it. Um, I'm interested, honestly, I, I have no idea what's gonna happen. I've seen swelling with other baits, like I said, and I just wonder, if that's gonna happen here, you know, if, if we're just gonna get that swelling and these baits are gonna turn into a different, almost completely different size bait, or if it's just gonna suck that liquid up and it's gonna make them smell like gulp alive. Because I have to say, with all the technology that Berkeley has, you know, we've got power bait, we've got max scent, the gulp alive stuff is some potent stuff. And if you've not played with it with bass fishing, you need to. I know this is really popular in saltwater, really popular with walleye guys, um, but in bass fishing, it can be really, really dangerous as well. But as you guys can see, we've got our wave worms in there. And now it's just a matter of being patient, letting them soak. And uh, we will see you guys in a whole entire week. One week later. Well, boys and girls, here we are. It's a little bit more than a week later. It's actually about three weeks later. For you guys that keep up with me on Instagram and here on YouTube and on Facebook, you guys will have seen everything that's going on in the Alex Red Fishing world over the past few weeks. And this little project here went way, way, way to the wayside, um, almost to the point that I forgot about it. But here we are, um, three weeks later. And we're going to see what happened to these baits that we put into this gulp alive juice here. And honestly, 
it's kind of an interesting deal. I didn't think this would happen. I thought it would be something totally opposite to this, but let's open these things up and let's check them out. Well, guys, there you go. Honestly, I thought they would swell up a lot more than they did. One thing I do notice is that the liquid is a little bit darker than it was when I put them in, so it must have pulled something out of that plastic saw and made them darker. But honestly, I thought these things would swell up a tremendous amount, but there must be something in that gulp liquid that keeps them from swelling. And now for the sniff test, they smell literally just like gulp alive liquid. There's no plastisol smell left over whatsoever. And so that gulp alive liquid must have penetrated those baits and must have done its job and put the smell onto those baits. So in my mind, This experiment was an absolute success because this means that I can now reuse this gulp alive liquid after I've used the gulp baits out of there with my plastics that I make here at the bait making station and I can make those baits smell like one of my favorite scent technologies in the whole entire world that gets a ton of bites, which is gulp. So there you go, boys and girls. I think that was a pretty successful experiment, if I do say so myself. Um, definitely wasn't what I was expecting, but still really fun. If you wanna check out all the tools that I use to make baits in this video, I'll link them down below in the description and I'll pin them in the top comment. And as always, you guys are sweet and thank you for watching.